Yeah, talking tax with Tom Yamachik. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. We're going to talk about building permits on repairs. You may wonder, it sounds like a non sequitur, but Tom is going to tell us how that works at DPP. Good morning, Tom. Morning, Jay. Thank you for having me on the show. So what's the history of this? Um, you know, you, you have a repair, and I guess theoretically, over the years, you've had to file for a building permit on a repair. It's bad enough to, you know, wait for months and years and for a building permit on a new, you know, construction, but on a repair, really? Yeah, so let me, let me uh, take a few minutes to set this up for you. Uh, we, we're now kind of in a situation where we have a legendary wait uh, for building permits of all kinds, especially here in the city and county of Honolulu. Uh, a city audit that, that took place just a couple of years ago found that a typical residential building permit application took 108 days to process, uh, you know, which it's, is over three, three months. Three, yeah. And, and uh, one for a commercial project between one and 10 million uh, I'm sorry, between 1 million and, and 10 million, um, uh, took 432 days over a year. That is a very long time to just be waiting for a permit. Mm -hmm. and, and one reason for the huge delay is the sheer number of products that are in the queue. Um, Pacific Business News recently reported that there were over 8,000 building permit applications in line as of August 2022, awaiting various stages of processing. Now, you probably know that um, you need a building permit for a new structure, right? But that's not where most of the that's not where most of them are. Most of the building permits are for renovations or, or uh, res renovations or maintenance. maintenance. And maintenance too. Maintenance. That's right. Really? Wow. Before 1993, and we're going to kind of go through this uh, <clears throat> over some, you know, a few, a couple of, uh, a couple of decades here. Before 1993, you needed a building permit needed for, uh, you needed a building permit for maintenance work valued at $300 or more during a 12 month period. And for work regardless of value that affected electrical or mechanical installations, whatever that means. So uh, yeah, you could have a repair for, you know, to, yeah, at least theoretically, uh, $1, um, you know, if you, wanted, if you wanted to change a fuse, technically that required a building permit. Because that that affects an that affects an electrical installation. Yeah. In 1993, the uh, the threshold was changed to a thousand dollars, but it still said that work affecting electrical or mechanical installation still needed a permit. Mm -hmm. Seven years later, uh, in 2020. Um, I got my. Uh, it's 27 years later, not seven years later. So it was three, it was a thousand dollars for a while. But in 2020, uh, we had an ordinance that was passed saying that any repairs valued at five thousand dollars or less during a 12 month period, even if it affected electrical or mechanical devices, didn't require a permit. So that was a significant leap forward. Um you know, you, you didn't need a permit to change a fuse anymore. Although I think nobody nobody was getting them anyway. Well, that's, uh, that's a point to dwell on here. Um, nobody nobody gets permits in this in this town. You don't get a permit unless you absolutely have to. Like for example, if you're going to sell the property, and the buyer is going to say, "Where's your permit?" Um, or a bank is going to say, "Where's your permit for a mortgage?" Um, but you know, most people will just do it. And furthermore. Most contractors, some of whom are licensed, some of whom are not, uh, are going to wink and blink on this. It's just not going to happen. It's bad law. Bad law is unenforceable law. And, you know, whoever is dreaming up these, uh, you know, systems is really not recognizing 
that people cannot afford either the money or the delay. So they don't do it, they ignore it. So we have all these, you know, day limits and amount limits and what have you that nobody nobody follows. What a great system. Well, what do you think? What do you think is the permit, uh, the purpose for a building permit anyway? I, mean, I don't know ensure... if you have a licensed contractor. I really don't know what you need that for. But um, I suppose, you know, the building permit of new construction is going to include, you know, zoning issues and, um, you know, environmental issues and, you know, the neighborhood issues that, that are part of the city's planning system. I'm not, I'm not sure about the technological side, you know, the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, what have you. I, I think that that's, that really does fall within the licensed contractors and subcontractors. Uh, well, I, I don't know where the where the delay happens, though. Uh, and just talking about new new structures, um, you know, it seems to me that if we have uh, these permit requirements that are standing in the way of new construction, standing in the way of the development and redevelopment of of the city or other other islands too, then we really have to hire the people and or organize the systems, automate the process um, immediately. And I. I don't for the life of me understand why we don't do that. Is there somebody standing in the way? Is there somebody saying, oh, no, no, we can't afford to, um, you know, improve the system. Uh, and so we'll just let it sit the way it is and it'll take years to get permits and, and we'll all be stuck in, you know, in a, in a rut. Well, uh, I think the traditional argument has been, you know, permits are for health and safety. You need to have, you know, buildings that are built that are going to stand up and not fall down. You need to have electrical installations that are going to, uh, you know, not hurt people, right? Yeah, but, you know, the, the guy at the DPP who looks at this may or may not be qualified to make that decision. A, a licensed electrician, a licensed contractor, a licensed engineer, you know, puts his stamp on it. Um, he theoretically is qualified to make the decision about whether the building will continue to stand up. Uh, I, I wouldn't feel that the DPP is better suited for that. I think it was probably not suited at all for that. Furthermore, I want to add another digression for you, Tom. I like to add digressions for you. I hope you don't mind. You always do anyway, so go ahead. Thank you, Tom. But, you know, back in the day, it was common knowledge that if you wanted a permit, you get a licensed architect or engineer um, who was connected to present your permit application to DPP. And, that would and, and if you didn't, you got an expediter who had the requisite connections and you paid that person a separate fee and that person would uh, present it to the right people and, uh, and, and, you know, thereby shave a few months off of your delay. And make sure to make a really significant um, contribution politically uh, or at Christmas. And uh, it was all corrupt, may I say. Uh, and everybody knew it. Everybody knew it. Um, so everybody went to the those designated expediters, architects, engineers who, who would present these plans, and that's how they got stuff done. Um, but this is not the way we want to do it. This is not clean and 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 fair and square. This is something other than that. It's the wink and blink uh, approach. And, yeah, that's and, the banana republic approach, and that's that's kind of uh, what we've been blamed for a long, you know, for a very long time. Um, so. Uh, but that, that's kind of where we're at these days. We're, these days we're at a $5,000 threshold. Okay. Mm -hmm. Repairs or renovations um, under $5,000 don't need a permit. So, I mean, that makes more sense. You can, re, you know, like, if, if your uh, uh, oven conks out, you can replace that. Uh, if your, um, you know, if your overhead fan conks out, maybe you can have somebody replace that. And there's no building permit required. Well, let me add, though, that the cost of even a simple replacement, simple repair can easily in this day, you know, with inflation, what have you, and, and the general high prices in Hawaii and the general unavailability of contractors and all that to the average person can easily exceed $5,000, theoretically. Right. And and you got to remember... Um, that five thousand dollars threshold was was set twenty years ago, and the and the and the dollar amount didn't change mm -hmm. since then. Well, we know the costs have changed. Oh yes, we, they have. They're, they're breathtaking changes. Yeah, this is a phenomenon known as bracket creep. You see it in income tax too. Uh, the income tax sets 
rates according to certain you know dollar brackets, but the but the brackets are fixed dollar amounts. Inflation marches on. Uh, the the dollar amounts don't change, and you know pretty soon you're paying you know in 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 much higher tax brackets, and you didn't do anything else, and you didn't get any more money. So so why is that, right? Um, that's because of what we call bracket creep. Well, it's a it's a, it's a DPP creep. Um, you know, they they have their systems, and you have to wait on them. And don't raise your voice. Don't complain. Don't send a letter to the mayor. You'll regret that. Um, and so, what you have is political power within DPP. I'm sorry to say, and I don't know how you fix that. I think the mayor could fix it. A city council could fix it. It could. Well, uh, I mean, let's 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 see what's happening this year. There's a there's a, a bill called Bill Fifty Six. Uh, that proposes to get rid of the five grand threshold entirely, um, providing that any repairs, which they define as replacing component parts of existing work with similar materials for purposes of maintenance, would be allowed without a permit, regardless of value. And uh, the, uh, uh, the the council member who who submitted that bill, uh, council member Tupola, she said. And this is, you know, echoing what we've been talking about just now. The monetary amounts outdated, especially in 2022, as the costs of materials and labor have increased due to record inflation. It's reasonable that homeowners be allowed to perform basic repairs to their bathrooms, kitchens, and other areas within their homes without the need for a permit, especially when the permitting process had been unfairly burdensome and excessively difficult. Good for her. Good for her. Um, the, uh, the bill is, it, is still, is it going to, is it going to pass? Well, it, it, uh, passed first reading on November 2nd, uh, of this, you know, of this year. So just, just, uh, 15 days ago. Um, and, uh, is there, uh, is there resistance? I mean, you would expect, for example, the architects, engineers, the contractors would say, fine, what a great idea. And it gives yeah. them a fair amount of latitude, maybe even too much latitude in some circumstances, but it gives them latitude they should have had a long time ago. And it gives owners a lot of latitude and tenants a lot of latitude. So, I mean, it's, it's all good. It's in the right direction. And, and uh, I, I can't imagine who would oppose it. Who would oppose this bill? Oh, there are there are probably going to be people setting self, health and safety concerns. Oh, you know, if you, you know, let these fly by not, night operators do these repairs, there's going to be an increase in danger. There, there's going to be increase in in, in life threatening incidents. Uh, you know that that kind of rhetoric. Um, but it's, it's tragic, you know. So everybody suffers because of the some imagined uh, risk. Uh, <clears throat> but you know. Uh, this is only part of the problem. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I don't know what happens in DPP. I, I cannot, for example, I mean, maybe there was a time I, I had some understanding of it, but I don't now. What happens? So the application goes in for whatever it is, um, and um, it, it languishes. It sits in somebody's in-basket, like, forever. And either they get to it and... Um, spend an awful lot of time reviewing it. Um, maybe they get it and they circulate it around a whole bunch of people who spend a lot of time reviewing it, or it just sits at the bottom of the basket and they never get to it. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, or, it, or, it it goes through, or it goes through multiple agency review, which, um, you know, like if you need five agencies to sign off on it, right? Like uh, fire, Fire department, um, board of water supply, um, you know, different agencies. Then you got to have a means of keeping track where the permits at, where the permits at, where it went. You know, if you need to follow it after, you know, a certain amount of time, uh, you know, who's following up on it? Uh, if you don't follow up, of course, there's going to be a, a bunch of delays. Well, have, have they not had uh, access to a Xerox machine? I mean, if I drop my permit application in somebody's desk, um, they could make a copy and they could run it parallel instead of serial. Um, and they could make a record. 
uh, on a database, and I, I know we could help them with this, where where we know when it went in to what agency and when it should come out and when it did come out and and you know get a status report by the push of a button, um, and including the owner, including the architects and engineers and contractors, the push of a button. Where is that sucker, and where is it with what agency? Xerox, yeah, I, I wonderful think, invention. I think at, at, at present, a lot of this is you know manually. Uh, manual paper processes now, right? I mean, there, there's a um, uh, there is an electronic system called Posse that uh, is, is supposed to track certain, at least certain kinds of permit applications. I'm not really sure how that works. Um, I've 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 seen like one end of it, and, and I think it's theoretically possible to go look in and find out where your permit's at. Mm -hmm. In, in well, very broad in very serial. broad terms. Serial approvals, uh, serial reviews is really uh, back in the 19th century. Um, they have to get out of that. They, they have to uh, make it parallel. We do have Xerox. We have ways of duplicating things and handing them off to multiple agencies at the same time and then controlling the flow in those agencies. Yeah. And, uh, you know, have you, have you thought about the possibility of saying, look, uh, if you're sitting on that thing for more than X days, it's deemed granted. You know, I think they actually have that. They have an ordinance that says that, but they get around it somehow. The bottom, yeah, line, is, bottom line is the bottom line. It takes months for the simplest permit. That's right. It does. And that's, and that's a, 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 you know, a big shame. Now, you know, if, um, you know, if there are, you know, people within DPP uh, who are, profiting from the graft, then then obviously they don't want the system to change. So that that you know may be one possibility. Uh, that you know not all of the graft has been rooted out. So um no, yeah, need... and, and don't don't forget it was only what six months ago when we had a major um, scandal in DPP. DPP, the same DPP, the same one that we're talking about, where these guys were taking money and they were investigated and uh, indicted. And I don't know what happened after that because as so much of this, this kind of graft is concerned, it, it fell off the radar. Do you know the status? Uh, no, I don't, but it's, you know, it's just like a cancer, right? I mean, you, you cut off one tumor and then you don't know where the others are. Yeah, true. And, and apparently uh, whatever they're doing to discourage people from the same conduct um, uh, that may or may not be working. It, it really requires a, a, a house cleaning, don't you think, a reorganization from the ground up uh, of DPP with a whole new approach. You know, and this, this is actually an expression of something that you and I have talked about before. It's this kind of contention attitude. It's an us and them attitude. Oh, you're from the public. We don't care much about the public. We have the power. We have the control. We'll do what we want. You have no way to reach us or stop us. We're comfortable in our jobs. Nobody can touch us. And, and that's uh, pervasive around the state, not only DPP, but so many other agencies where they can sit back and relax. We're comfortable. You can't touch us. Yeah, and then, and then you know, they, they start acting like, um, you know, their positions and entitlement. Uh, and and they really don't care a whole lot about the uh, about the consumer. I, I remember, I remember once uh, several years ago, um, uh, and and you know this is not with DPP. This was with uh, uh, the, the you know the, the state real estate commission. I had a an application in there for review, and uh, and 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 the reviewer called uh, my attorney and said, "Hey, you know." It's the holiday season. I need to spend more time with my family. You know, is, is it okay if I take another couple of months to review this application? <laughs> and and uh, you know, what do you say, right? I, I wanted to say, look, if you if you if you if the if the bank can give me a couple months break on my construction loan, um, then maybe I'd consider it. But but I really don't want to. <laughs> but but the bank won't do that, and I and I really don't want to give you. Uh, you know the the extra you know couple of months or so, uh, and I, and I think you know what we came back with was um, a, a kind of a half baked response, um, 
like you know you you do what you have to do or something like that because you know we really didn't want to piss the guy off mm. well you know it, it makes it makes me wonder about um, my statement earlier where i said maybe they need more more staff i i don't think it's as much a staff issue as a productivity issue you know why does it take so much time to do it and uh, are they going home at three o'clock in the afternoon um, what's happening here why can't why can't they be productive so uh, you know i i don't know the, the the full answer but i would say there's an issue in my mind as to whether additional staff would make it work better or not you know if you keep on layering staff into government everybody has that entitlement feeling and uh, they're looking forward to a very rich retirement at the behest of the state uh, including lifetime health benefits and all that, all the union can give them, and and the, and the, and it does. And and the problem is um, is it is an attitude thing that comes out of that. If only we could sort of give them a, a vitality injection, and and have them actually um, work hard every day and care about you and your application and your bank. Um, how do we do that, Tom? Is it a political issue? Is it a culture issue? Uh, is it a management issue or is it all of those things? Well, I, th I think it's primarily a culture issue. I mean, and and uh, it's political in the sense that we need some, you know, top down leadership to deal with it. Um, we we need to, I think, fundamentally look at the, uh, you know, the attitude toward, uh, you know, customer service. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure those people, you know, at the, uh at, 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 at the agencies you know don't know or don't care that i have a construction loan outstanding and i i need to pay x amount of money for every single day uh whether or not i get you know whether or not i get my permit yeah it's and, also and, your, your investors it's not just the loan it's your investors if they see the project stalled they're going to say gee i'm going to be careful next time i invest in hawaii which takes me to a, a point you made a minute ago about the bank and all that so what effect does this have on a macroeconomic basis? If I imagine a, a, a veritable sea full of permits all stalled uh, and all these architects, engineers, contractors, investors, and banks all stalled in a state which we recognize is underdeveloped. It's been underdeveloped from statehood and before, um, you know, where the, all these projects seem to get stuck all the time. And, and you know, my question is really a macroeconomic question. What effect does this, you know, this grand slowdown have? It increases costs. I mean, you ha you have uh, more inter interest that the bank's charging because of the delay. You know, the more time that architects are and engineers are spending to follow up with permit applications that are in the queue, uh, that's that's extra cost. Um, you know, time time is money. Yeah, and the other aspect I think is the economy, even at a, a fifty thousand foot level. The other aspect is the economy itself. It just seems to me if you have this kind of slowdown, and you have a whole culture of slowdown, and you have an underdeveloped state which needs development, needs housing, uh, it needs housing at reasonable prices, um, and other other projects, the same thing. It's such an aggravation to go through this process for everything. And it, and I and I suggest to you, uh, I wonder what your opinion is. I suggest to you that this slows down the economy in general and the ability of the state to keep up. And I don't know how it is in other states. Maybe they have similar issues, but I have the sense that they move faster on permits. I have the sense that if you want to build something or start a business, you can do it much quicker without this kind of uh, uh, you know slowdown effect. And if that's so. Um, that we have a special cachet about slowing down economic activity. We have a slower economy than we should have. And uh, this, this affects everything. A slower economy affects everything. It affects wages. It affects uh, costs, as you said. It affects the, the prospects of our young people who say, the hell with this noise. I can't even build a house. I'm leaving town um, because I can't get anything done here. I mean, what you and I are talking about, Tom, is no secret. And there are people out there, business people, homeowners, landowners, you know, everywhere in the food chain, and kids who learn it from their parents and friends, that this is a, a slow ball situation. 
and they'd rather go to a, a, a place, a city, which is not a snowball situation. So that leaves us with the brain drain, another effect. And all of this feeds into the, the slowdown of our economy and the increase in costs and ultimately the price of occupancy. And the price of everything else. Uh, right. You have to, you know, understand that 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 uh, you know, whenever one part of the economy uh, experiences, you know, delays or costs, uh, it spreads to the others. It's like pushing a balloon, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. So um, you have these, you know, inordinate uh, slowdowns in the uh, in, in the real estate sector, uh, which you know probably. Uh, the city government doesn't mind so much because it drives up values and therefore property tax, right? Yes, I. That's another show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but it also has secondary effects, like people can't buy the stuff uh, at at affordable prices. So so you get a different kind of stratification of the uh, of the population base that maybe you don't want. Sure, and and to go to the uh, you know investment in big projects side, you know if if you have a say a big box store coming out here, they're they're deep pocket, clearly, and they can hire architects, engineers, and expediters to go get those permits, and and every, everybody in DPP says, oh wow, this is a national, this is a biggie, uh, this is good for us, so let's hustle on this one. And of course, they're being encouraged by whatever political forces are in play. So the, the big box store gets the permit in record time. But the mom and pop, they don't have that kind of depth. They don't have, they don't have that kind of money or power or influence. Yeah, that, that's what happens when you give incentives of you know, whatever, whatever nature. Um, you know, the people who get the incentives get benefits and everybody else has to suffer. Yeah. So I, I don't think people take this problem that, you know, that we've identified here at DPP seriously enough because it has all kinds of secondary effect. I mean, this, this last point about the mom and pops, uh, you know, are not being treated demogra democratically. They're being screwed as against the, you know, the deep pocket guys. And um, so it has that effect, but it has all the other effects we talked about, including slowdown of the economy in general. And I don't think people realize from a macroeconomic you know, point of view how, how much toxic there is in slowing down on permits. It's not just, oh, well, we have to be patient and we don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to complain about it. We just let it happen. You know, here in Hawaii, hey, we, we let it happen and hope that they like us and um, they, they, they give us a little, a little charity, if you will, by finally, after months processing our permit. It's not that simple. It affects all of us. It affects our prices, our economy, our whole state economic structure and social structure. Um, you know, so I, mean, I think people have to understand this and they have to get riled up, you know? I mean, like, I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore. I mean, that's what the state should be saying and doing. Was this a political platform point in the last mayoral election? I, I don't think so. Um, I mean, it may have been talked about a little bit, but uh, I don't major. I don't remember it being a major issue. Uh, but definitely, there are some certain things that we, you know, we as, as the electorate can do. Uh, we can support Bill Fifty Six. We can uh, let our lawmakers know that um, you know these reforms uh, on DPP are necessary and warranted, uh, and it's not going to compromise health or safety. Um, there's obviously the, uh, you know, the presence of, uh, licensed architects, engineers, and, and uh, contractors that are, that are in the mix already. I mean, we, we give them licenses for a reason, right? And, and we should, uh, we should encourage them to, to push without, uh, uh, resorting to a political pressure. They're like, just put it in there and then complain. And, and I suppose individual people who can also put in applications. It doesn't take a, a professional to put the application in. They should, they should make A. They should get out there and make a stink. They should, they should write letters and go to the newspaper and just keep, keep pushing on this. 
until the culture changes. Uh, you know, I, what I, what I, you know, we all let it happen. Every homeowner has let this happen, or has ignored the whole process, which makes for bad law. Um, so, and, and every contractor certainly too. So, I think it's a matter of uh, rising up, don't you? Oh yeah, no, I mean, I think um, people need to uh, let our executive and legislative leaders know that this is a, a big problem, and we got to do something about it. And and it's a it's a problem that can't wait. No, it has it has to change. I mean, I think see if you agree with me. I think we're at an inflection point. I think we've had COVID. A lot of you know small businesses have gone out of business. A lot of them are teeter tottering right now. Uh, a lot of people have left town. Um, it's not clear exactly how with the form, the shape our economy will take going forward. Uh, we made the, uh, I would say, the, the easy choice, um, uh, you know, decision to keep on going with uh, hospitality. We didn't really, during COVID, we really, we in the state, the legislature, the government didn't really focus on other things. We did not incentivize um, other sectors. So here we are back again to hospitality, a fragile, a fragile focus for the economy. Um, and if anything happens, you know, globally to, to stall um, air traffic, what have you, or, or for that matter, a, a global recession, guess who pays? We do, because people won't have the money to come here. So I think we're at an inflection point, and we have to get smart about it. Everything we have to, we do has to be clever, and smart, and forward thinking and visionary about our own identity uh, in the global market and in in the tourist market also, but. In everything, we have to keep the keep those kids here and incentivize them. Yeah, I I think um, you have you have part of it right. Um, I think we're in a temporary respite, uh, but if we don't um, act correctly, it's not going to be an inflection point. It's going to be you know return to free fall, and uh, that's what we really need to guard against. We what we what we want. Is, is an inflection point. So, you know, things turn around and keep going in the upward direction. But if we don't do anything, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Government has to recognize that it cannot be same old. This is a time for creative thinking. It's a time to recognize our risks. Um, and, and I suppose um, uh, it's, 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 like, it's like Singapore. You know, you have to look around you and see how you can not only survive but thrive uh, how you can get ahead of the, the madding crowd and i don't think we're doing that and it's really time to do that or we'll pay a terrible price we are paying a terrible we are price. paying a terrible price and so we have to we have to look at every corner of our economy and this is one that's obvious this thing with dpp because it slows everything down um, and we have to get on them and and maybe if we do and we can solve the problem it will send a message to other parts of, of government and government processing and to the public in general is we got to kind of speed up our economy and we can't tolerate things and slow it down. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Tom. Always great to talk to you. It always comes up. We always come up with ideas that we hadn't thought about before. It's a, it's a free association kind of discussion. I really appreciate that. Uh, Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, which does much more than tax. Thank you so much, Tom. And thank you for having me on the show. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook.
Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.